Hey guys, I'm Kevin Budyshevsky, and these are the renal tubular defects. There are a lot of small details in this section, so rather than covering all of the minutia, we'll just keep our discussion here to the most high yield topics. The eponyms for renal tubular defects can be hard to remember, but some people like the following mnemonic because it helps you remember the order of these syndromes along the nephron. It is, kidneys put out fabulous glittering liquids. I personally don't like mnemonics, so I just remember the alphabetic order. Fanconi is first, and therefore starts with F, so it occurs first in the kidney, or the proximal convoluted tubule. And the rest are in alphabetical order and desetting order down the nephron. B occurs next in the alphabet and occurs next in the kidney, at the thick ascending limb. Gittleman, which starts with G, which is next in the alphabet, occurs next in the kidney at the distal convoluted tubule. Then Lydell syndrome, which is next in the alphabet, occurs next in the kidney, in the collecting ducts. And finally, same, or syndrome of apparent mineralocorticoid excess, screws everything up and occurs elsewhere, but we'll cover that in a second. So let's go more in depth. The F in fabulous is for Fanconi syndrome, which is a reabsorption defect in the proximal convoluted tubule. In Fanconi syndrome, the cells of the proximal convoluted tubule are non-functional which causes all transporters to be affected. Can you guys guess what might be lost in the urine if the proximal convoluted tubule doesn't have any solutes? Correct, that would be glucose, amino acids, as well as bicarb. Can you guess what metabolic disturbance loss of bicarb can lead to? That's right, it'd be a metabolic acidosis. Since Fanconi syndrome is proximal and the PCT causes an acidosis, which is also referred to as a proximal renal tubular acidosis. There are a handful of causes of Fanconi syndrome, some of which are hereditary, such as Wilson's disease, and others of which are non-hereditary, like ischemia or nephrotoxic drugs and chemicals. Moving on, Barter syndrome is a reabsorption defect in the thick ascending limb of the loop of Henle. It's an autosomal recessive mutation in the sodium potassium chloride cotransporter. It results in hypokalemia and metabolic alkalosis, similar to what you would see with the use of which diuretic? Good, that would be a loop diuretic. Therefore, chronic loop diuretic use and Barter syndrome present similarly. Gittleman syndrome is a reabsorption defect in the distal tubule due to an autosomal recessive mutation in the sodium chloride transporter. A deficiency of this co-transporter would be similar to use of which diuretic? Good, that would be thiazides. Also remember it'll be less severe than Barter syndrome. Why is that? Well, because the majority of sodium is reabsorbed in earlier parts of the nephron. Lydell syndrome, results in an increased reabsorption of sodium in the distal collecting tubules. This is due to increased activity of the epithelial sodium channel. It is autosomal dominant and results in hypertension. It causes decreased aldosterone levels due to negative feedback inhibition from the hypertension. Treatment for Lydell syndrome is amyloride, which blocks the overactive sodium channel. In same, or syndrome of apparent mineralocorticoid excess, there's a hereditary deficiency of 11-beta-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase, which normally converts cortisol to cortisone in cortisol-sensitive cells. If this enzyme is absent, excess cortisol will activate mineralocorticoid receptors. What does excess mineralocorticoid activity do? Well, it would cause increased sodium uptake at the expense of potassium. And what follows sodium? Good, that would be water. Therefore, what electrolyte disturbance would you expect with same? And what change would you expect in one particular vital sign? So same would result in hypertension and hypokalemia. Same also results in metabolic alkalosis. Interestingly enough, this can be an acquired disorder if you eat too much licorice, which blocks this enzyme's activity. How would you treat hypertension with hypokalemia? Well, you could do it with potassium-sparing diuretics. 
So step one probably won't be interested in having you memorize the exact genetics of these disorders, but will be more interested in testing you on the signs and symptoms of patients with these conditions, such as hypokalemia and Barter syndrome, or hypertension and Lydell syndrome. 